In this video, I'm going to deploy the Fast API and React app I built in the last two videos. No matter what tools you use, deploying a front end and a back end to work together involves a lot of similar steps. So even if you're using different platforms, this video should still be helpful. To deploy my app, I'm going to be using a service called Savala, which is also the sponsor of this video. Savala is an easy to use platform as a service that lets you deploy apps, static sites, databases, and object storage. Everything you need for a modern web app. The dashboard is simple to navigate and the smart defaults make deployment fast and straightforward. In this video, I'm going to deploy the backend API as an application service. I'm gonna deploy the front-end React app as a static site, and I'm gonna use a Redis database to keep track of all the tasks. And all of this is gonna be done on Savala. So if you wanna try Savala yourself, there's a link in the description so you can sign up and check it out. So let's get into deploying this fast API and React app. And by the way, if you wanna know how they were built, check out the previous two videos, link in the description below. Okay, so to start, here's the code that I have. This code is written in the previous two videos, so the backend code here is for the Fast API app, and the front end is for the React app. So a good thing to do before you go to deploy is make sure that the production commands work in your dev environment so you don't have to waste time debugging. So let's get that to run here. So I'm going to change over to backend first. This is the Fast API app. And I'm going to do UV run and then fast API run. So this command fast API run is the production version of running fast API. So let's see if it works. And looking here, we see starting production server. The server is going to be on port 8000 and the docs are, are here. So let's just click on this link. And we see the docs show up here. So it's on localhost now, but the docs page is loading, so we can assume that the rest of the API works. So now let's make sure that the front end works. I'll stop this and I'll go into the front end directory. And what I want to do in the front end is I want to build the code. So before I was doing npm run dev, but now I want to do npm run build. So we'll try to build it and we get an error. So we see an error here, query is declared, but its value is never read. So this error isn't a problem in dev, but when you go to build, it is. So let's open up the app.tsx. And this query here, I guess I never actually use it. So I was gonna use it as a type annotation, but I didn't get around to it. So that's fine, let me just remove it. And then everything else in here should be used. So let me go ahead and try to build this again and it looks like it's running and it's done building. So it created this distribution folder here, dist. Um, it has the index.html with a link to the, the JavaScript here that has been compiled. So everything appears to be working here. So the next thing you need to know is on Savala and a lot of different platforms as a service providers, you need to have a Git repo. So I have a Git repo set up here already. Let me go ahead and commit that change that I made. So just git add all and then um, removed query because it was unused. Okay, so we'll do that. So this is a local repo, so I don't have it like on GitHub. So what I wanna do now is I wanna go over to GitHub and create a new repository. And I'll just call this fast API react example. Okay, and I'll make it private and I'll create a repository. And then down here, I'll just add the origin. So I'll copy the link for adding the origin. Then I'll paste it in here and then do hit enter. And then I'll do git push origin master. And now if I go here and refresh, I should see my code. So I see it all here. And now I have enough to deploy it. So I don't have to worry about my local environment anymore. I can go over to Savala, and there are three things that I need to set up. So one will be the front end, one will be the back end, and one will be Redis. So let's start with Redis. So I'll go to databases here and just click create a database. And then I want to select Redis here. Valky also works as well, but Redis is fine for my purposes. I'm not going to change the name. I'm not going to change any of the settings here. The only thing that's important is to keep note of the location because the location here needs to match the location of the eventual backend app. So I'll create. And then this can go ahead and create in the background. I don't have to do anything with it. I just need it to exist and I'll set it up on my app in a second. So now let me go back to the main page here on the dashboard and now let me add an application. 
So I'll hit create an app here and I want to select private repository and then I'll type in fast API react example. I'll check this automatic deployment on commit. So when I make commits to master in the future, it will automatically redeploy my app. The location is correct. And then for resources for this video, I'll just make it the smallest resource. So the H1 resource, and that's it. I'll just hit create, not create and deploy because there are some things I need to do before I actually deploy it. So I'll hit create here. And now the project is set up so I can modify the settings. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna update the settings here on the left, so settings, and I'll go to build. So the reason why I wanna do this is because I have the front end and back end directories. So I need to tell Savala that my back end stuff is in the back end directory, because by default, it's the main directory. So I'll go to update settings here in build environment. And then for the build path, instead of dot, I'll just change this to back end. So update. Okay, so that's done. And now what I wanna do is I wanna set up my environment variables. So if you remember from the first video, I had four environment variables. So there was the front end URL, the Redis URL, the OpenAI API key, and the YouTube API key. So the front end URL, and what I can do is I can show you the example. So front end URL, that was localhost, but on Savala, it's gonna be a little bit different. But as a temporary value, I'll put in localhost, even though this won't work. And I'll get the new value when I deploy the front end. I can't put in the actual value yet because I haven't deployed the front end. And now the next one is going to be the Redis URL, but I actually don't need to do that because I can connect the database uh, through the dashboard and the URL will update automatically for me. So I'll skip that one. I'll do the OpenAI API key. Okay, and then I added my OpenAI API key and my YouTube API key because they're the real values, so I just put those in there. And now for the Redis one, let me go to overview here. And then for connected services here on the right, I just need to click add connection. And then I can select the service. So this thick moccasin mink is the Redis instance. And then I just need the Redis URL. So I'll get rid of host, port, and password and just leave the URL and then hit add connection. All right. And since I'm on the networking page here, one thing I wanna do is I wanna update the port to be 8,000. So by default, Savala is expecting port 8080, but fast API run will run on port 8,000. So I can just click on this edit port here and change the port from 8080 to 8,000. And now let me go back to the environment variables and we can see that the Redis URL is there. So we have the four environment variables that uh, we need for the project. So this should be enough for the back end to work. So now let me just go down here on the overview page to deploy now, and I'll click on the button, master is the branch, and then hit deploy application. And then I can just wait. So here in the deployment logs and the runtime logs, I'll see what's going on. Uh, if there are any issues, I can debug from what I see here. Um, so here we see it's installing Python. It's using Python 3.13, which is the same version that I'm using in my project. Um, right now, the start command is Python main.py. So I need to change that, um, but it looks like everything else is okay. And then the runtime logs will appear once the deployment has completed. And uh, because it's using Python main.py as the run command, it's going to fail when it goes to run it. So we'll see that in the runtime logs when they appear. And while I'm waiting for this to complete the deployment process, um, notice that it's installing everything automatically. So the way that it does that is it detects uh, what type of project you're running. So it detects that I'm running a Python project. It can look at my Py project file. It sees the dependencies here and it will go ahead and install it. Also, if you have a requirements.txt, it will detect that as well. Uh, the idea is it will automatically detect the language that you're using and set up everything appropriately. So because I'm using Python, it's deploying a Python app. It's not trying to deploy a Node app. If I had like Node files in there, like an index.js, a package.json and so on, then they will try to build a node project, but this is Python. So we see here that the process has been deployed successfully, um, but like I said, because it's using Python main.py, it shouldn't work. So if we try to visit the app, we'll get some kind of error. Yeah, service temporarily unavailable. Uh, let's see if there's something in the runtime logs that we could look at really quick, but I already know what the issue is here. It's because it's trying to use Python main.py instead of fast API run. 
So I don't see anything here. That's okay because I need to go back here to the web process and click settings. Um, and probably what's happening here is it's trying to start it over and over again. And you know, each time it's failing. So let's do fast API run and then hit update. And then it should prompt me to deploy changes. So yeah, I'll hit deploy changes. And then I can look here on deployments. And once the logs show up, I can see if it is able to work with this fast API run command instead of Python main.py. Okay. And then we look here on the runtime logs because it didn't really have to uh, change anything about the build. And we see that the starting production server has appeared just like we saw in my dev environment. So now if I click visit app, let's see what happens. So we get a not found page here, which is exactly what we want because we don't have anything to find on the index. But if I go to slash docs here, I see uh, the docs here. So we know that the fast API backend has been deployed successfully. So now let's focus on the front end. So let's go back to the main part of the dashboard and let's click on static sites and then add a static site. So the repo is gonna be the same. So fast API react example in my case. I'm going to check automatic deployment on commit again, and then the basic details. So for this one, I'll just put two because my backend is named this. It's named after the Git repo. So uh, the original will be the backend and then two will be the front end. And then for this, because I'm simply deploying, I don't need to enable pull request previews. And then I'll hit continue here. And then we have to go through some build settings. So the build command is going to be the same one that I ran in my dev environment. So it's going to be npm run build and then the node version. So the node version that I have on my computer is 22. That's also like the long term supported version. So I'm going to select 22. But if you have a different version, you can select that or you can select LTS for the long term support version or you can select the latest version. So I'll just select 22. Uh, the root directory in my case is going to be front end. So just like the back end is in its own folder. The front end is in its own folder. So I need to set front end as the root directory. The published directory will be the location of the files that were created. So remember in my dev environment, they're inside of this dist folder. So I'll put that dist. The index file is going to be index.html. And then in my case, I'll let the error file also be index.html. So the index.html comes from the distribution folder here and then environment variables. So the environment variable that I need for this, I'm using it inside of app.tsx. So this Vite API base URL. So I didn't set it up in my dev environment because I'm using localhost as the default, but I need it in my production environment. So let's go over and add that as the uh, environment variable here. And then the value is going to be the location of the backend, right? So the backend, I just copied the URL. I'll remove the slash docs because I don't need that. Um, but we see my app is on Savala here. And then once I have that, that's it. I can just hit create site. And I just need to sit here and wait for it to build. This should be pretty fast because my app is pretty simple. So once it's done building, it will deploy it. Um, and then I'll be able to visit the site. And the, there's gonna be one more step I need to do for that because I need to know uh, what the URL is for the course for my backend to work. So it looks like it's deployed. I'll hit visit site. And it looks like the site is working just fine. So what I need to do is I need to grab the URL here and I wanna go back over to my backend and then the environment variables. And now I can update this front end URL. So the front end URL is not localhost. Uh, the front end URL is going to be the URL that they gave me. And by the way, you can set up your own uh, domains for this and everything. But for this video, to keep it simple, I'm just using the auto generated domains. Um, but here, I just need to set that as the front end URL, hit save, and then deploy the changes again. And then I just need to make sure that the deployment completes, which it should because it's just a change of the environment variable. And then if it does, then I can test out the app to make sure everything is working. So it looks like the building has to go through 
uh, because I changed the environment variable. So I'll wait for the building to complete. And then once it completes, I will try out the app on the front end. And if we look at the runtime logs, we see that it's up and running. So we should be able to try the app now. So let me refresh and then I'll put in the um, URL there, hit analyze. We see it's analyzing. And if I look at my network tools, I should be able to see some requests happening and we see we get 200 statuses. So these are the polls that I have set up in React Query. So it's just going to poll until the response comes back. So I'll just wait for that. Okay, and it looks like we got the comments back with the categories that they belong to. So as you can see, deploying on Savalo is really easy. Um, the setup process is pretty straightforward. Uh, we just had to you know, change a few settings for the Fast API app. Uh, if you were doing something like Django, you probably wouldn't have to change anything, but point is, it's still pretty simple to use. If you ever need to get into the, the server that the app is running on, there's a terminal here. If you need a persistent disk for your app, you can create disks here. And then if you ever want a domain, which you probably will, you can uh, just follow the instructions here to set up. It's basically just going to your domain provider and changing some of the DNS settings. And uh, that's about it. So the back end part has more settings, obviously, because it tends to be more complicated, whereas the front end is just uh, building. But as you can see, we have the history. Uh, you can also set up domains here, and there are also some settings that you can modify uh, for the front end. It's a lot simpler because it's just building something and then running static files, but the idea is uh, it all works just as easily as the back end. So that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to show you on how to deploy a front end and a back end together on Savala, but just know that this applies to any method of deploying that you're going to do, similar steps. If you're interested in learning how to deploy a Django app to Zavala, I have a video on that that you can watch here.